This is the um, cesium-131 plumes that were released from Fukushima and uh, this is March 18th, the day that they reached the west coast of North America. On March 17th, public health officials in the counties in California, and I have two letters, one from Sonoma County, north of the Bay Area, and one from Santa Clara County, which is um, where Stanford is in Silicon Valley. The public health officials released letters to all doctors in those counties telling them not to give American patients who were concerned about radiation exposure iodine tablets. The amount of radiation would be insignificant and iodine is dangerous for your system. A couple of days after that, San Francisco reported 18,000 times higher levels of radioactive iodine-131 in the drinking water in San Francisco than the EPA standard allows. On March 17th, the same day that those letters went out that prevented the protection of American Californian thyroids and thyroid, uh, iodine is also in every cell in your body and since uh, maybe in the last 20 or 30 years the iodine levels in Americans has dropped 50 percent so they are obviously causing nutritional problems in American food. Uh, the warning about the danger of iodine being toxic in the body is absolute total baloney because if you look at the iodine levels in indigenous people who live on seaweed, on the Japanese, their iodine levels are at least a hundred times higher and Americans are already depleted by 50 percent. So how in the world could the U.S. Surgeon General, who by the way, wears a military uniform with bars on it because he's a military official. Why is American public health under the military? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because when the nuclear weapons program was being developed, they all knew it was absolutely devastating to the public health and to the health of the environment. So the Atomic Energy Commission and the military formed the EPI, EPA to hide that truth from the Americans. They, de they started the National Cancer Institute, the National Institutes of Health, and the Centers for Disease Control. So why is the military and the AEC, or now the NRC, running our health agencies? The answer is to protect the nuclear weapons and the nuclear power programs. And they stopped, they've stopped measuring radiation, uh, uh, radioactive iodine in milk. The Canadian government and the US government said the amount of radiation that will be in our environment is minimal, it's not dangerous to public health, but the Canadian government moved their British Columbia radiation monitoring program from the coast to Kamloops, which is very far inland. And that was to um, protect their own workers, but also n to not have a paper trail on the very high levels of ionizing radiation that was being rained out along the coastal areas and then moving inland. The EPA announced that they had 124 radio radiation monitoring stations in the U.S., but they said 24 are broken, and they said we're not measuring any elevated levels. It's all harmless. The Canadian government denied there was any harm, harmful radiation in the environment, and so I called my radiation scientists around the world and they gave me data from the Norwegian and the German facilities that actually do 
monitoring in the environment for the partial test bench for the um, the uh, non-proliferation treaty to make sure no one is testing weapons illegally. And those are the two best sites that I've seen. This is uh, an, actually an animated um, map that shows how the plume moves over three days. The one, uh, this is a, I think this is an American one, but the German one and the Norwegian one, they've had it the whole time so that anyone anywhere in the world can understand what is really happening and even evacuate. We should have all been evacuated from the West Coast. And um, this has just gotten worse. Now they're flooding it into the ocean. It's going to get into the ocean currents and be carried around the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. And eventually, in one year, it's completely mixed in the whole entire atmosphere of this planet. There's nowhere to hide. There's no way to stop it. There's no way to turn it off. It respects no borders. It respects no socioeconomic class. And it respects no religion. It's a global, universal, equal opportunity killer. And we can't see it. We can't taste it. You can't even measure it in the rain because it's low levels. But as it rains out, every day it accumulates in the environment. And what they're doing is serving us a dose of radiation that will last for thousands of years that has contaminated all of North America. These are the monitoring, international monitoring stations. This is from a Dutch site, I mean a German site, around the world. And these light up as the radiation is detected. And you can see the date on the right, up, upper right is changing. So it starts at March 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. By the 29th, it had even reached Colombia in South America. Now, at the equator, the equator is very hot and moist. And air flowing from the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, towards the equator heats up and rises at the equator. So it's like a shower curtain that sort of prevents the air, the poisoned air from North America North, the northern hemisphere getting into the southern hemisphere. But eventually, because of all the processes in the dynamic troposphere, it ends up in the southern hemisphere too. Now, tell me if you really believe the government statements that it's harmless and it's a small amount and it's not really going anywhere. It sure is going everywhere and they know exactly what they're doing because they've been monitoring radiation since 1945. This is cesium-137, and this is March 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, oh, first, April 1st. Now, if you notice, the eastern part of Canada, let me show you where everything is. This is looking down on the North Pole, on the Arctic. This is the United States, Baja, Mexico, that's Hawaii, this is Canada, and this is the Arctic Ocean, this is Greenland, and this is Iceland. Here is Europe, this is Scandinavia, this is the Mediterranean and North Africa, and this is the Middle East. And if you watch Canada and Washington DC and New York, you will notice that that radiation flows around them. 
That is because a harp, high pressure center where the harp heats that air up has formed a sort of a barrier or a high pressure to keep the radiation from contaminating that part. This is nothing. The, that red spot uh, the days before, right after the explosions, were huge. That tongue went of red, very high levels of radiation, reached a third of the way to Hawaii. And if you also look, why is that going out to Hawaii? That's a very strange weather pattern when it's going east from west to east. It also went across the Atlantic into North Africa and the Mediterranean, uh, contaminating Libya, where we're dropping depleted uranium bombs, and into the Middle East. So the food baskets are now completely contaminated in Western Canada, the Western United States, and Western Mexico. And actually, Hawaii is also very contaminated, and it's because they have the highest rainfall. When the Atomic Energy Commission was monitoring radiation from bomb testing all over the world, the highest levels of plutonium measured in the world were measured on the Big Island of Hawaii. I'm going to read something from a book called Unless Peace Comes, a scientific forecast of new weapons. This was published in 1968. And I'm reading from the chapter called How to Wreck the Environment. And this is by Dr. Gordon MacDonald, who was a Jason scientist. The Jason scientists are the modern Manhattan Project scientists, and they work for the Pentagon. They're civilians. They're paid by the MITRE Corporation, which was started by uh, MIT scientists. And the uh, military advisor to presidents, his name was Wheeler, Colonel Wheeler, who was murdered on New Year's Eve and found in a trash dump uh, he also worked for the MITRE Corporation, so he was most definitely involved with HARP. Um, also, um, someone in the audience asked me to explain the difference between a magnitude 1, a magnitude 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 earthquake is that each magnitude is a thousand times stronger than the last magnitude. So it's not one, two, two is twice as strong as one, it's two is a thousand times stronger. And a magnitude nine earthquake, the Fukushima earthquake, released the amount of energy that would be released, that's joules or calories, that would be released by one million Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombs and they were about 30 kilotons.